Chapter 25 Getting Ready Perhaps I had laid it on a little thick, I thought in retrospect. However, the way Mrs. Casings and Tammy's eyes gleamed over the tasty morsel of gossip, I knew it would be spread all over town before the gardening luncheon was over. Maisie Alderson and Sue Ling would know that I had found Carl's incriminating videos on the laptop. So would everyone else in town, which I was counting on. The cemetery tour was going to be more popular than ever before. And if Pesky was smart, he would hear the rumor and show up to fan the flames, even if it was just to lecture me some more. At the very least, he should wonder why I was telling everyone he was going to get the laptop at the cemetery before the tour when I had already handed it in to the police. Hopefully, Pesky was smart enough to show up. I actually wanted him there. If I was going to out the killer, it would help to have a police officer witness the whole thing. Or I could get charged for interfering in an investigation. I wasn't going to abandon my plan. Someone had broken into my house. I wasn't going to have anything worse happen to me or my daughter over Carl's death. I was determined to get this person behind bars so Cat and I could feel safe in my own home again. While Cat hadn't said anything about the break-in scaring her, she had crawled into my bed last night. Truthfully, I was glad she had. I was spooked, too, and having her there made me feel better as well. Placing the wilting plant in a spot of honor on my kitchen table, I warned Boo not to touch it. Leave the plant alone. It helped me out today and deserves to live if I can grow a green thumb. Boo looked at me doubtfully as I fed him some dry kibble. I didn't blame the cat. My house didn't have any house plants at all, except this sad specimen now on my table. I tended to kill plants with neglect, which is why I only had some plain bushes surrounding my house. Well, I had joined the gardening club, so that might have to change, I resolved. Besides, it would be nice to have some pretty flowers and flower beds around the house. Hopefully, it wouldn't cost too much. Grabbing my makeup case from my room, I started to work on my hair and makeup for the cemetery tour. It was a time-consuming process, and I was glad that I had started early, as I accidentally overloaded the circuit breaker by heating up the curling iron and running the microwave to warm up a quick lunch. Grouching to myself, I grabbed a flashlight and headed for the basement. Flipping the breaker to return the power didn't take very long, and I could hear the door upstairs open and shut. Cat, I called out as I headed back up the stairs out of the cellar. Cat should be done with her shift at the delightful dumpling by now. At least I hope it is her. For a moment, a shiver of fear runs down my spine, and I pause on the stairs hoping it isn't someone else in the house with me, searching for Carl's laptop. My heart pounds as I creep up the stairs. I need to get ready, called out a breathless cat as she headed for her room. Did you let the seams out on the pants like we discussed? Crud. I slap my forehead in disappointment at my memory, but also feeling relieved it is my daughter who is home with me. I had entirely forgotten about the two tight pants. Get them for me and I'll grab my sewing machine. Mom, groans Cat, I can't believe you forgot. Well, with a murder and a home break-in, I think I could be forgiven for forgetting to alter a pair of pants. I roll my eyes. I'm doing it now. You can work on your makeup while I get this done. It takes longer than what I would like, but I manage to let the seams out a little so the pants aren't as tight for Cat. Now she is in no danger of splitting her pants, I toss them onto her bed so Cat can change into them before heading to the bathroom to finish curling my hair. Before long, we are bolting down a quick snack and head for the cemetery. Fortunately, the weather seems to be cooperating, as there are no clouds and the temperature is moderate for this time of the year. The afternoon is late and the sun is tracking across the sky as we store our bicycles near the cemetery entrance and walk to the meeting place by the mausoleum in the center of the cemetery. Most of the members of the amateur actor group are already gathered for the event. As we do every year, Joan will go over the expectations of the evening, ask if we have any further questions, and thank us for our hard work. We will all take our places near our graves and wait for groups of people to come through, touring the cemetery, so that we can explain our historical person's life and death. 
there's a group of volunteers at the front of the cemetery handing out maps and taking tickets. Sometimes, we do get a few people who didn't purchase tickets in advance, and were able to collect cash for tickets. All proceeds from the event go to beautifying the parks and cemetery of Autumn Heights. My stomach flutters with nerves, as Joan is about to begin her little speech on the steps of the mausoleum. By now, it should be spread all over town about how I am giving Officer Pesky the laptop from Carl's apartment. Hopefully, it will draw out the killer. If you enjoyed this chapter of One Drops Dead, think about ordering the next novella in the series of Autumn Heights, Two Drops of Chaos. You can find it on Amazon. Happy listening.